Okay, awesome. Well, with that being said, uh, I'm really excited right now to have uh, Brian Kane that's going to be coming on with us in just a moment. Uh, one of the things that, you know, we find very, very, uh, let me stop share for a second. There we go. Uh, one of the things that is huge when we get into any type of market, especially a market like this, right, is the number one most important tool that we have uh, in addition to technology is the relationships that we have with our clients, right? You guys have questions. Guess what? Your clients have questions too, right? Your clients are curious about what's going on. Your clients want additional support. They want answers. They want to feel like they have somebody that they can reach out to. And those that build a database right now during the time when any type of market downshifts, this is where you get the exponential returns in the long term, even more than you would if you started building your database you know, last year because we look at that relationship that we're building, that opportunity to really provide value. So I'm super excited uh, to have Brian Kane joining us. He's got a, a 16,000 person database. He sells over 100 plus homes a year, 74% of those from his database. He sold 107 homes last year for 73 million in volume. And uh, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot that he can share on database. Brian, are you here with us? Hey Monica, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good to see you, Rich, as well. You too. Good to see you, Brian. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thank God for your whole office. They get to look at you, or me and Monica, not just you, Rich, but you, you know. That's right. I like this video conferencing. It's fantastic. So there he is. All right. Didn't well, have to wear my tie. Yeah. There we go. All right. Good. Looks like we got lots of people working today. It's fantastic. Thank you for having me, um, you know, visit the Market Center here. Uh, Rich and I have uh, built a relationship over the years and he just wanted me to share a little bit about my journey and hopefully some of my experiences and me sharing some of those experiences may help all of you in growing your business. So um, I know there's a weird time and you're getting a lot of information and it's hard to keep absorbing everything that's coming at you. So I want to just take a breath for a second and just remember that the real estate industry hasn't changed. The real estate market is a shifty market. We're always shifting. Sometimes it's gradual and sometimes it's sudden. And I've learned over the years that there's just a few things that we can do fundamentally that help us thrive in any market. So if you have a pen, if you're taking some notes, I wanna write down, grow your business. Just write it down on your paper, grow my business then i want you to put a big equal sign okay so grow my business equals grow my database and that's about as simple as it comes but today's topic of conversation is really going to be how to grow your business by growing your database and for those of you who've read the millionaire real estate agent you know it's a race it's a race to what number, if anyone wants to shout it out. And the, and the millionaire real estate agent won. What did Gary say was the average number of people in a database of the agent earning a million dollars a year? Did anyone shout it out, Rich? I couldn't tell. Monica's whispering 5,000 or 2,000? You guys don't know what I'm whispering? <laughs> Yeah, it's a race to 2,000, okay? It's actually 1,980, I believe it was the exact number, but it's a race to 2,000. What we know now is that it takes a bigger database to get that million. As people have become more cocooned, and that couldn't be more of the case than right this moment. People are literally no longer in the workplace, right? They're no longer get, you know, congregating in Starbucks and restaurants and bars. So the more people become cocooned, right? And there's more layers to get in be between you and your client or you and your database, that number needs to be bigger. So I want everybody right now just to write down the number of people they currently have in their database. And when I say database, I mean command. I mean eEdge if you were using it, market leader. I'm not just talking about somebody having a spreadsheet, like, you know, one, do you have a database? And two, how many people are in that database? Write that number down. 
Then I want you to subtract 2,000. And step one to, group, to growing a sustainable business that pays you interest every year, that's your gap. That's, that's the amount of deposits you need to make as quickly as possible. So if you have 300 people in your database, which means you're 1,700 people short of getting to that 2,000, then you know exactly what you need to do. It's a race to get 1,700 people in that database. Now that may seem daunting, but let's break that down. Let's say over the course of the next 17 months, the next 17 months, you can add 100 people a month to your database. That amounts to 25 people a week. That means five people a day. Now, for those of you who wrote down the number of people in your database, I want everybody to do me a favor. Pull out your cell phone. Go ahead and pull out your cell phone for a moment. And I want you to go into your, let's see if I can, I want you to go into your contacts. So I'm going to go into my contacts. Okay. And if you go, if you start to scroll through your contacts, you'll see you'll see on the bottom, there's a little hashtag. There's a little hashtag. Click the hashtag. Whether you have an iPhone or an Android, once you click the hashtag, scroll down to the bottom, it's gonna tell you exactly how many people you have in your phone. So open up contacts. We should start to scroll on the left-hand side. You'll see, you'll see A, B, C, D going down to a little hashtag. Click on the hashtag, scroll to the bottom. Now, does the number you wrote on your paper match the number of people that are in your phone? If you've got more people in your phone than you've written down in your database, then you can start there. How do you grow your database? Make sure everybody in your phone is in your database. And Monica, hey, thank you for the warm introduction. I did just want to clarify one thing. My database is about 3,000 people right now, not 16,000. Oh, even better. Yeah, and the reason why I wanted to clarify that is, is I'm too growing my database. And it doesn't take 16,000 people in the database to sell 107 homes. In fact, my database has been anywhere between 2,000 and 3,000 people as we've kept it lean and mean over the last 10 years. And that's consistently spit out over 100 home sales a year. In the last 10 years, I sold over 1,300 homes. 87% was from the database. So to put that in perspective, for the last decade, I've sold $50 million worth of real estate annually by getting repeat and referral business from the database. That amounts to 1.25 million of gross commission income, and that's a long, sustainable career. So I always like to get things kicked off a little bit by just what Gary says is just get real, get right. What's reality? And if we're going to have a, a nice conversation today, a nice dialogue about how to grow your business and, and how to grow your database, the first thing to understand is, one, am I using a database? Do I have all of my contacts, the names, phone numbers, emails, and most importantly, the physical addresses of all of my contacts? And are they stored in one place that I visit? Step two, how many people do I currently have in my database and what's the delta? What's the difference between the number of people I have in my database and the number of people I need to have in my database to hit my goals? Now there's not just one prescription, everybody. Getting to 2,000 contacts is a prescription for earning a million dollars in the real estate business. But what if your goal is to earn 500,000? Could you do it with just 1,000 people in the database? What do you all think? At our price point. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. To earn $500,000 in Southern California means you're selling about what, 40 homes a year, roughly? 
to get 40 pieces of business divided by 4,000, that, that, that's absolutely doable. In fact, the millionaire real estate agent says for every 12 people in our database, we're gonna get two pieces of business. I will tell you that I've had the privilege of um, being in Gary Keller's mastermind group since 2011. So I've spent nine years with the top agents in the company, comparing notes, masterminding, and really learning how to grow a business by growing our database. And what we can say is what's evolved since the millionaire real estate agent was written was that the database still matters, but the ratio is more like 12 to one. So for every 12 people in the database, you should expect one transaction. So if you have a thousand people in your database, there's no reason not to spit out 80 home sales a year. So again, step one, do we have a database? Step two, how many people do I need to have in my database? Is it 500? Is it 1,000? Is it 2,000? And step three to growing a successful business by growing your database is to really determine how it is you're gonna to communicate to that database. See, I think the real estate game is really simple. There's three parts, right? There's a whole bunch of people out here that we haven't met. The goal is to meet them and have a systematic way of staying in relationship with them so we can get repeat and referral business. So we have to master three things. How do we lead generate and add people to our database? How do we systematically follow up and stay in relationship? And how do we deliver great service when those people are ready to transact? Our business is no more complicated than that. Are we waking up every day thinking, how many people do I need to add to my database today? And once I do, how am I gonna de go deeper and deeper and deeper into relationship with the people I already know? And when they raise their hand and they say, hey, Bob, hey, Joe, hey, Brian, hey, Cindy, I think I wanna buy or sell, do we show up and deliver value and give them an ex a memorable experience that not only helps them accomplish their goals, but they can't wait to tell their friends about us. You know, I've had, I've had the good fortune, you know, truly, um, you know, in the last decade to, you know, I, to sell nearly three quarters of a billion dollars worth of real estate. Most of which has come through my raving fan base. And I can tell you that the only difference if that's not your track record, if your track record isn't that you sold three quarters of a million dollars of real estate or if you sold 30 homes or 40 homes or 100 homes, I promise you the only difference between your business and my business is that for a decade, I've had at least 2,000 people in my database and there hasn't been a single month that they have not heard from me. So for the last 200 months, call it, right? since I've been in the business for 17 years, right? Let's take the last 10 years. So for the last 120 months, there hasn't been a single month where, where people in my database have not heard from me. And let me tell you a little bit about my story. If you guys don't mind me sharing, I think it's completely apropos, but um, I did not succeed my way to success. In fact, I failed pretty hard. I got into business in 2004. My, my father, my family, people had had various degrees of, of success in the real estate business, but I thought it was important to go out there and achieve on my own. So I started my own independent real estate company, not affiliated with Keller Williams or any other big brand. Back then I was 24 years old and wanted, I thought that success happens all by yourself, right? Well, fast forward to 2007 and you know, okay, at by 25, 26 years old, I was doing pretty good. In 2007, I sold 47 homes. I was 27 years old. I was making a lot of money. And then all of a sudden something happened. Something changed, something shifted. Mortgage banks closed down overnight. The FHA shut down, sound familiar? The economy shifted. Something happened that was out of my control. And I got to tell you, I had never felt more alone in my life. I was on my own independent island 
as an in, you know as an independent i had several different outside sources that i took consult from and as things started moving very quickly all of a sudden i owned a boutique brokerage where i had 12 associates i also owned a mortgage company and myself and all of a sudden november of 2007 december of 2007 january february march there's not a single home sale five months go by I didn't make a single home sale, nor did anybody in my company, and yet the bills were still coming in. It was costing me 25,000 a month to keep the doors open. So within five months, I had $125,000 going out the door, not a single penny coming in. That's how I found my way to Keller Williams Realty. It was out of necessity, and thank God I did. It's the best decision I ever made. I'd love to sit back and tell you how smart I was that I knew that the best, best strategic move in the world would be to come and join a Keller Williams office so that I could continue to thrive. But at the, in all reality, it was do or die time. I had proposed to my wife in November of 2007. I paid cash for her ring. I was on the top of the world. And when I married her 13 months later, I was $2.2 million in debt and I had $500 in my bank account. Anyone else been there? I know Rich has. It's painful. It's painful. And I wanted to bring that story up today because I know a lot of us have some fears right now. And oftentimes fears are just false expectations appearing real. And despite how painful that was and despite how uncomfortable and how unplanned and how uncertain I felt, I can tell you that I was okay and I'm still okay. And I'm okay because thank God I took action. But for anybody who heard what Gary had to say on Monday morning when he addressed our company, he said at the very opening statement, and I don't know how many people caught it, I hope you did, but he said the best way to predict the future is to go and shape it yourself. The best way to predict the future is for you to take action. And let me show you, let me just tell you about my journey of, of growing my database because when I came over to Keller Williams, I had a database. In fact, I was using ACT software, ACT, in case anyone's old enough to remember that. Uh, yeah, but you know, I only had about 250 people in it. And when I joined my market center, again, I was, um, even though I was drowning in my own personal financial situation, if you looked at my track record, my team leader said, whoa, my gosh, this guy did $30 million in home sales last year, right? What a, what a big producer. I sure didn't feel that way. So the very first thing I did when I came to my market center is I set an appointment with our productivity coach and I sat down and he said, hey, Brian, I'm super excited to have you here. And I said, why is that? He goes, because I've been waiting. I've been waiting for somebody to come here who's really going to get serious about doing whatever it needs to take to succeed in this business. And I have a sense that you have the resiliency to do so. I want to tell you everybody, words matter. Cause in that moment, I didn't feel resilient. I felt like I was failing. But when we lift people up around us, it works. And when he said, hey, I just believe that you're resilient enough to make that happen. And so here's what we should do. Let me ask you a question. What time do you get in the office every day? No, 915, 930. I said, why is that? So well, that's when my phone starts ringing. I figure that's when everybody else is, you know, doing business. He goes, why don't we do, why don't we do something a little different? I'll make, I'll make a deal with you if you make a deal with me. He goes, why don't we meet every morning at 7.55 a.m. right here in this office? We'll spend five minutes and you're going to tell me the one great thing that you're going to accomplish that day. I'm going to tell you the same thing. And by 8 a.m., we'll both be on the phones. And you're gonna, and we're gonna lead generate from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And we're gonna grow our, we're gonna grow our databases, and then we're gonna come together and see how that works out. I'm telling my story because it's the single biggest thing that I could have ever done. It's the single one action that's made the biggest difference in my life. I changed my habits. I got in. I met him at 7:55, five days a week. I got on the phones. But maybe you're wondering, well, who did you call? Back then, Connect wasn't even around. You know what I did? At the advice of my productivity coach, he said, hey, go online, and I want you to go onto the web and just type in Keller Williams Denver, Keller Williams Downey, Keller Williams Virginia Beach. 
you're going to go to the Keller Williams website, you're going to call the office number and you're going to ask for an ALC member. The reason you're going to ask for an ALC member is because you're going to know they're in the top 20% of production in the office and that they're more likely going to have referrals for you or if you have a referral to them, they're going to handle it with care. And so I spent the first eight months of my career in 2008, and let me paint the picture. When they gave me an office, I was the last person to get an office. It was in the bottom floor. There were no windows. It was all cinder block. <laughs> and I had a lateral file and I took two more pieces of cinder block, a piece of plywood, put my laptop up there. I put a picture of my now wife up there. I put a picture of a home in a, in a community called Mission Hills that we wanted to buy a home in. And I had a sign that said, make the calls. And for two hours, all I did was I, grow, I grew my database of agent referrals. Now, I know you guys have an OP who's a scripts master, but I'm going to give you a script that maybe he doesn't have. We'll see. <laughs> so write this one down. Mr. Agent in Denver, Brian Kane in San Diego, I'm calling you about a referral. How are you? Good. Thanks for asking. Hey, listen, I have a question. If I had a referral for your market, I was wondering if you are still accepting referral business. Of course, they're going to say yes. Well, great. That's fantastic. Let me ask you a question then. If you knew of somebody looking to buy, sell, or invest in San Diego, do you have an excellent agent that you can trust? Terrific. Can we be referral partners? I'd love to stay in touch with you once a month so I stay top in mind. Feel free to do the same. And if I ever have a referral for Denver, I'd love to send it your way. And if you ever have a referral for someone in San Diego, I'd really appreciate the opportunity to serve them. Now, by the way, I see that this Zoom call is recording. Monica said that she had that set up. So I know I went really fast. I'm sure that she can redistribute that script to everybody. But again, it's, hey, Mr. Agent, I'm calling about a referral. I was wondering, are you still open to re receiving referral business? Great, that's fantastic. So if I had a referral to give you in your market, you'd be willing to accept the referral? Great. Let me ask you a question. If you were, had somebody you knew looking to buy, sell, or invest in San Diego, do you have an excellent agent that you would trust that referral with? Great. Can we be referral partners? I want to tell you why I know that script works. For the last 10 years, I told you that 87% of my business comes by referral, correct? Yes. 16% of that, so 16 of that 87% comes from agent to agent referrals. Now let's do the math here. $73 million of real estate production times 16%, that's 11.6 million in real estate sales. Those phone calls make me $300,000 a year annually. That's one heck of a business. You still make those calls? I still make those calls. In fact, I'm doing it right now. It just happens to be to 40 people all at once. So let me ask you guys all a question. <laughs> you have a buyer, seller, or investor looking for San Diego. Do you now have an excellent agent that you could trust? Yes. Great. I would really appreciate an opportunity to serve your clients, and I love paying referral fees. Would you mind if Monica shared your contact information so I can stay in touch with you, all of you? No problem. <laughs> all right. So step one, right? Got to have a database. Step two, how many people do you need to have in your database? Step three, how are you going to communicate with the people in your database? And I just gave you a great referral for how to grow it. And surrounding those three steps has got to be resilient, unwavering, competitive commitment to your goals. And I'll tell you, is anyone else feeling like there's a lot of negativity right now? And every time you pick up the phone or turn on the news, you're just getting bombarded with fear and anxiety, right? Don't hang out with those folks. 
<laughs> Talk to the people who are going to lift you up and feed your mind. Like Diana Kokoska always said, our cells eavesdrop on our thoughts. And how you show up and the smile you put on your face, and how you carry yourself through these tough times, it matters. And by all of us speaking positively and, you know, um, and continuing never to give up, it's just as contagious as the virus. I got to tell you, 2009, when I was making those calls, was still a rough year. My, my business went backwards. I went from selling 47 homes to 32 homes. For some of you may say, oh, poor Brian, he sold 32 homes. What's he complaining about? Well, I got to tell you, the 32 homes that I sold, all that money was spent before I even made it because of all the financial obligations I had put myself in. So I want to at least share an experience that I hope everyone takes to heart right now. Don't wait. When you go home today, you sit down with your spouse, you sit down with whoever is involved with your money, whether it's a business partner, a life partner, whoever it is, and you start looking at your expenses. It's not just about cutting expenses, but it can also be about renegotiating expenses. You could be in a relationship with somebody where you still need them in your life, and you know what? Maybe they'd be willing to provide you that same service for less. Because the alternative is they make no money. So I got to tell you, in 2008, instead of revamping my website and, you know, coming up with all sorts of other crazy stuff that I was trying to do, I wish I would have just cut expenses, fixed my expenses, and doubled down on my lead gen. But you know what? Had I had my wish come true, maybe I wouldn't have found my way to KW, which was the best decision I ever made. But it's a lesson that I, I'm going to make sure I never, ever, you know, make a mistake on again. I can tell you that in the last three days, I've met with my wife, my accountant. I own two market centers, so I've met with both my MCAs, and we've gotten so granular. We've pulled up our chart of accounts. We've looked at every single thing that we've spent money on in the last four months. And we've decided whether or not it's a crucial part of growing our business. And I can tell you that in a matter of four days, I was able to save about $6,000 per month collectively. That matters. That matters big time. And we're going to keep going. You need insurance. You need a database. You need a phone. You need an internet connection so you can stay connected. You know, one of the things we did, for example, we have an IT company. I'll just give you one example so you know what I'm talking about. But we have an IT company that supports us. And we were looking back over the last 120 days, and we realized they only made three office visits in 120 days. They're charging us $568 a month to be on call. So the very next phone call was to call them and say, listen, we realized in the last four months you've had three visits. We'd like to keep your services. We think you do an excellent job, but we're wondering if you would provide the same service that you already provide us at $350 a month. What do you think they're going to say? Yeah. And if they say no, I'll say, well, let me get this straight. Over four months, you've worked four hours and I've paid you $2,500. Do you think that's fair market value? I want to pay you every penny you're worth. And you know what? If our IT needs change and they increase in the future, we can change our contract. But for the time being, I'd like to ask to renegotiate the contract and see if we can help each other out. So those are the tough conversations you got to look at having right now. Because while you're growing that database and making deposits, making deposits into your database, are they going to pay off right away? All right. So you've got to create as much runway as you can in a shifting market to fix those expenses expense manager way through until those deposits start to pay off. And I know we just have two more minutes here, so I'm gonna end on this story. Hopefully it's inspiring. In 2007, no, excuse me, in 2008, I helped a military gentleman buy his house. 
he went into my database, of course, and we stayed in contact and I developed a deep relationship because I stayed in contact quite often. And in 2010, he invited me to his military retirement party. I brought my fiance then, my now wife. We went to the party and we went to a Mexican restaurant and I remember I met his mom and I met his sister. They were just so proud of their son and of course, because I was friends with their son, they automatically liked me, right? <laughs> and so I asked, I asked the mom and the sister for their contact information. They went into my database and every year they got my systematic touch. Twice a year, I, once a year I send out my Padres magnet and I used to send out a Chargers magnet, but you know, they're all dead to me now. <laughs> so now I send out the San Diego goals magnets, but every, every, you know, I send out my Padres magnets and my Chargers magnets and every year Irene Hazlett, okay, she was the 86 year old mother of that retired military man. She would call me every year and she would thank me so much for sending her that schedule. And I promise you, whenever I was one week late on delivering that schedule, she would call me and say, Brian, it's Irene. I just wanted to make sure you still had me on your list. I sure appreciate getting those calendars. And twice a year, I would have a lovely conversation with her. She was invited to my client appreciation party. I saw her two and a half years ago at our summer soiree that I threw out at the courtyard in the Marriott. I got some sad news over the weekend that Eileen passed away last week. The reason I knew that is because her daughter called me and said, Brian, I don't know if you remember me, it's Cheryl. I said, of course I remember you, Cheryl. She goes, mom passed away and I'm calling you because she always said, when it's my time, I want Brian to handle my real estate. So 10 years after having one interaction one lunch interaction and a shared experience where we were celebrating her son i made sure that i systematically stayed in touch and now the family knows that the person that they're bringing in to help their family through this tough time cares about them i've been there the whole time and i'm going to honor their mother by helping them get the highest possible price for their home despite what's going on in in the environment around us so I hope that inspires everybody to know that you pay deposits, it'll pay you interest down the road. You've just got to survive it. You've got to survive these times. So cut those costs, double up on your activities and grow your database. And I know you'll all continue to have thriving careers in real estate. So thank you for having me today, Rich and Monica. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that was a great share. And I thought uh, it was interesting that there's so much parallels between you and Gary's story of also having gone from, you know, in a shifting market five months without selling and having built his database over that time. So it's, uh, it's definitely kind of that, that key piece. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, I'd love, Rich, since I have you on here right now, I'd love to go right into, uh, into our owner's remarks. Yep, uh, if Brian, if you can hang out for just one second and answer one question. Sure. So <clears throat> with, with focusing on your database, whether you have one or you don't have one, right now with what's going on, um, how, how would you or what advice would you give everyone to reaching out to their clients, reaching out to their neighbors, the community, um, and, and offering support with what's happening to, to not only um, come from contribution to the database they have, but to create connects for the database that they need to build. And question two is, how would you tie that into our technology platform? Because in, in my view, this is an incredible opportunity to set people up on smart plans and get them to um, upload our consumer app. So I'd love to hear your comments on that. Just so you guys know, that that's not a loaded question. Here's my calendar. And I already have scheduled today from 2.30 to 4. I'm meeting with my marketing coordinator and my lead listing agent, and we are continuing to develop smart plans for how we're nurturing our people. We're absolutely focused on the database right now. Um, we are completely transitioning into command. I've been on Boomtown for the last seven years. We've been... Um, 
getting the entire database prepped and ready for the cutover. Um, teams, the team function and command became live at Family Reunion, which I couldn't be more thrilled about. The um, market updates, you know, the, the bi-weekly um, market snapshots that are coming out of command we're already using. And so uh, by the end of this month, my, uh, my team's gonna be completely on the command platform because one, I can't wait to cut $1,200 a month out of my budget from Boomtown. It's gonna save me $14,400 over the course of the next year. And whether I keep that money for a rainy day that may be ahead or I take that $14,000 and I contribute it back to the community in which we live, work and play and help provide some relief assistance or whatever I can do with it, it's gonna be $14,000 more good that we can do with the money. So I'm absolutely um, on that track of cutting everything over. I'm all in on command. I'm all in on the technology. Uh, we, we did a tequila fest about six weeks ago. I had a booth and we were giving away tickets. And in order to get a ticket, all you had to do was download. It, would buy, it was so great because it was the weekend after family reunion, the KW app was out. People were scanning our QR code. And in two hours, I added 72 people to the database who were on our app. So we're out there finding ways to connect. Um, I would encourage you to do the same. Embrace the technology. Doesn't always work. Get over it. Keep moving forward, right? Um, and Rich, just to, to just answer your question concisely, um, I think the best thing to do is make the call. You don't have to have the answers. Don't not make the call because you don't know what to say. I just gave you the example of Irene Hazlett. She never talked to me about real estate. You know what she talked to me about? Anything, because she was 86 years old and she just wanted to connect with somebody. And we would have lovely conversations. And right now, there's a lot of people who are, who are scared, they're paralyzed, they feel isolated, they're anxious, and all they need to do is hear your voice to say, hey, Rich, it's Brian. I'm just calling to check in and see how you're doing. And when they ask you about real estate and everything else, you can just tell them the truth. The truth is that real estate's always been the best hedge against inflation and the buffer against market volatility. And we've lived through two world wars and the AIDS epidemic and the Holocaust and the swine flu and 9-11 and the depression and the recession. And we always know that if you hold your real estate for 10 years or longer, real estate has always been the winner. The stock market has no correlation to the real estate market. You can look it up. During the dot-com crash of 2000, the stock market went down 25% in one week. Six years later, the real estate market burst. The stock market and the real estate market are not tied together. Make sure you remind people of that. Tell the facts, be there for them and make the call, that's the most important. Just make the call and if they're asking you questions you don't have answers to, let them know that's a heck of a question and you're gonna be talking to your industry peers and when you have more perspective, you're gonna call them back. That's all I gotta say about that, Rich. Great job, awesome, Brian, thank you so much. All right, yep. I'm logging off, talk to y'all soon. Okay, bye, thank you. Thank you so much.